Welcome back. So after being able to enable the basic peripheral from an existing code example, now we'll start from scratch, let's say, uh, at chipset level, and we will build back a P2P server application. So let's start. Okay, so in order to achieve this end zone, we'll go through various steps. First, we'll initialize the hardware. In step two, we'll move into the interesting part, uh, advertising demystification and playing with BAD API to move to advertising. We'll generate the code and we'll be able to play. And then some bonus track to add the logs. What do you need? So you need the same, exactly the same requirement as the first click and go. So that means you still need to get access to the STM32 WBA, 55 nuclear boards, the smartphones, and of course, all the software prerequisites that are available on the link on the video YouTube page. What is the purpose now of the end zone? In the click and go, we are starting from an existing code example. Now we are willing to start at chipset level to build a basic P2P server application. The focus of this first end zone, end zone one, is really to put the device visible and connectable from any smartphone. In end zone two, on top of being connectable, you will be able to exchange some data through attributes. So let's unpack the board and start. Just a word, all the material we really used and all the steps which are described in the coming video are extracted from uh, STM32 wiki pages. If you go to Google and if you enter for STM32 WBA wiki, the first link will allow you to go to STM32 wiki pages associated to wireless product. So here, as you can see, there are various articles about BLE, Zigbee and Thread. The end zone we are playing is the one associated to STM32 WBA series, how to build using KubeMX. Again, this wiki page is more than useful in order to understand some BLE concept and overall software architecture. And this is the page we will use, or at least you can refer to later on, with all the details that we will play right now. Just for witness, uh, the legenda associated to the video this icon means here we are dealing with theoretical slide. This means we are adding some code and we'll build and flash to the board. Okay, so step one, hardware initialization. As in phases already, doing the click and go and how to start evaluation, using STM32 cube and cubemix, you can start from code example, typically the click and go at board level or at chipset level. And this is our focus of the day, starting at chipset level. And this is exactly what is described in the wiki page. As a customer, let's say, I want to build my own application, my own stuff based on ST chipset. So let's start from chipset level. Starting at chipset level means, okay, what is the complete journey? I need first to initialize the hardware the peripheral, the clock tree, and at the end I will be able to focus on the application itself. Configuration of the BLE, the advertising, service characteristic, and at the end being able to generate the code and build. This is definitely the focus of the hands-on 1 and 2, focusing on BLE aspect, demystifying a bit some concept and playing with the board. So yes, we will start from chipset level, but to ease our overall job, we will not start from scratch, but we will use an IOC file. The IOC file are the file used by Cubemix to generate the hardware configuration. So, on the YouTube video link, there is a link to access to this IOC file. So please, access to it, copy it to your own local directory, and then we'll be able to start. What is the purpose of this IOC file? The idea again of the hands-on is really to focus on, let's say, the BLE stuff where you will have to put your application. The idea of the IOC file is that it's already pre-configured to enable all the RF block to allow later on to enable the BLE stuff. Okay? So again, this is used to ease your life. Let's start and let's play again. And let's play together to import this IOC file. 
Okay, so we'll all open kubemx and I will do exactly the same to import my IOC file. So let's open kubemx. I will start file. I will go through import. Import an existing kubemx configuration file. Then it will look at all the IOC file. Then I will browse to the repository where I have stored this IOC file. Then I click to open, finish, and then kubemx tool is starting to generate the overall hardware configuration. And at the end of this configuration, which is ongoing on my laptop right now, you should get this nice screen with the pinning which has been enabled, okay? And the fact that all the associated hardware block has been enabled to later on being able to enable the BLE stuff. So let's have a look to what is going on my tool. And right, here I've got the QBMX panel and indeed I have now the hardware configuration which is done, STM32WBA55. And if I click there to AZ, what I will find? I will find that already some blocks are in green, meaning that those blocks have been, have been enabled. And why they have been enabled? Because those blocks are mandatory to later on being able to activate the BLE. If you want to have more details about why I need RTC, why I need RCC, you can have a look to the wiki page where you will find some rationale. Okay, good, so we've got our hardware initialized. Let's move now to advertising and Bluetooth Low Energy application configuration. So let's open back CubeID. Through CubeID, you go to AZ. Here again, you have all the hardware IP which has been enabled thanks to the IOC. And what we are willing to do now is to enable the WPAN. So you click to WPAN. And what are we willing to do? I'm willing to build a basic peripheral. I want to create a peripheral and a GAT server application, a basic device which is capable to exchange data with a smartphone. So you click there and then you can start to configure the BLE settings. Okay, so here we have so enabling all the hardware IP. We are saying that we want to create a basic peripheral. I'm ready to build a basic peripheral. As we are dealing with Bluetooth Low Energy, let's maybe step a bit back with a bit of theory and understand some concept. Here, a BLE stack with GAP, GAT, and ATT layers, which is the host stack. The GAP layer is defining, let's say, the roles that the device will play in the topology. In general, there is a peripheral and a central. Peripheral is a device which is advertising, saying, hello, I am here. And the central, most of the time, is the smartphone, which is looking and scanning and looking to connect to the peripheral. This is the role defined at GAP level. At GAT level, this is another angle. This is the way that define how we want to exchange the data. And here there is two, let's say, main role, the server and the client. The server, which is the one having some data to share, so typically your device, and the smartphone, which is a client, which is the one looking for data. And that's true in general rules of things. Central is acting as client and peripheral is acting as server. Okay, so now let's move to BLE configuration. What I want to do, I want to initialize some settings of the BLE advertising. The first step before being able to connect is advertising. So I want to be discoverable. Okay, let's have a look about the first uh, advertising configuration. So in advertising configuration, I can set different settings. 
the advertising type, meaning, okay, I want to be connectable or not. If I want to lose the whitelist, and the advertising interval, which is defined with a min and max, just to give flexibility to the stack in order to put some, let's say, more connection if we are dealing with a multi-slot use case. So, advertising type, we are willing to accept all the connection from any smartphone. That means we are not using privacy, so advertising filter is disabled. Advertising interval, pretty simple. Here we will deal with one connection, so the min plus max divided by two will give us the advertising interval. And the value here is in milliseconds. So, for time being, let's open back Cube ID. For timing, we use an, the same settings. We keep the default settings. That means we will advertise at almost 100 milliseconds. What does that mean? Here, a basic timestamp about a legacy advertising frame. So, advertising means I am a device saying, hello, I am here, okay, just broadcasting some data over the air while the central, the smartphone is scanning. The specification will tell you that you need to send an advertising event saying, hello, I am here on three channels, 77, 78, 79. And you have to send those advertising events at each advertising event, which can be from 20 milliseconds up to 10 seconds. Okay. So that means every typically 100 milliseconds in our case, I will get an advertising event. That's clear there is a big link between connectivity latency and power consumption efficiency. Advertising every 20 milliseconds will consume much more than advertising every 10 seconds. But at the end, being able to connect 20 milliseconds, if somebody is entering in the room with a smartphone, you will be visible in few clicks and being able to connect quickly. So at the end, here, this is a draft of uh, legacy advertising. So that means we have a burst of advertising, which is very basic, 31 bytes, roughly 3 milliseconds every x milliseconds, so every x advertising interval. But for sure, our product supports much more than basic legacy advertising. We are supporting typically advertising extension. We are supporting as well the periodic advertising, which is used for the BLE audio stuff. So, okay, this is just for legacy, and we'll focus on legacy, but we are supporting much more. Okay, after the advertising settings, let's move to the payload, what I want to advertise over the year. First, let's select BLE advertising, okay? We will have to say what we want to push over the year. We have to select the advertising type, and we'll see later on in coming slides what is the meaning behind but I want to advertise local name and manufacturer data, okay? So, we select yes to local name. We put a local name, okay? So this will be the name broadcasted over the year. And then as well, we'll push for some manufacturer data. Please, please keep in mind that local name must be equal maximum to 10 bytes, okay? This is a constraint from the tool, so please make sure the local name is below 10 bytes, okay? So, let's do it together. So, I'm moving now to Cube ID. Let's enlarge the window here. So, I want to advertise a local name. Yes. What is the name I will put? So, I will put my name. So, I am Dominic. So, I will put DOM, STM32, for example. So still below 11 bytes for sure. And I will have to advertise some manufacturer data. Okay, so you have to say, yes, I want to put some manufacturer data. And here, please, the number of items to be sent is 12. And I will explain later on. Okay, so back to the slides to make sure about the settings. You should have a local name below 10 bytes and manufacturer data with maximum 12 bytes. Put 12 here, please. Here, we are willing to advertise some data, some theory here. How an advertising payload is built. So first, again, considering legacy advertising, an advertising PDU is up to 37 bytes, right? 
on those seven, 37 bytes, six bytes are reserved for the BLE address. That means you have up to 31 bytes for the advertising data, the payload that will be transmitted over the air, say, hello, I am here. And this advertising data is split in what we call advertising element, okay? So within an advertising payload, you can have different type of AD element. The ID element are specified by an advertising type. And the specification is telling you that there are different advertising types. Local name, manufacturer data. And associated to an advertising type, you've got the data and the overall length. So here, typically, I want to broadcast over the air P2PS01. I want to say this is a local name, so I will put the tag for local name, which is 09, and the overall length is 08. At the end, if you look about some logs on smartphone, this is what the smartphone will be able to, to see over the year. The first eight bytes are associated to a local name, which is this hexadecimal value, which is P2PS01. Okay? So at the end, pushing over the year advertising element, you can push for what you want, temperature, name, hello world, what you want. The only thing you have to do is that you have to specify an advertising type. Okay? local name, manufacturer data, and this is a way for the smartphone to detect, okay, I know that behind this, I will get 8, 10 bytes associated to the local name. But for sure, for local name, you can put a name or temperature, up to you. It's you that is designing the application, okay? So, the manufacturer data, here we have put 12. This is basically to adjust and adapt to a basic protocol, which is used by our ST toolbox application, in order to be able to display a nice ST logo detecting, okay, this is the ST devices, and then later on to display LED, push button, and so on. So this is purely applicative stuff. Okay, so back to the cube ID. We have defined manufacturer data, local name, but there's still, still something to be done. In configuration, you should get at the bottom, gap device name, okay? Please, here, put the same content as put in the local name. This gap device name, let's say, is a specificity used by iOS devices that copy this device name on their cache at the first connection. And so at the second connection, whatever you will push over the year in the advertising frame, the iOS will detect, okay, I know this MAC address, I know this device. And rather than displaying the BLE advertising payload, the iOS will display the gap device name. So to avoid any confusion, let's put here the same content, okay? So back to the slide. I'm putting exactly the same, and the rationale behind, again, it's due to iOS, let's say, constraints. As you can see on your cube ID, you should still get a yellow warning for the platform settings. And this is something that we have to set to anticipate log activation. Let me open back the cube. Platform settings, indeed, it's yellow. I want to enable the logs later on over usart and it will be on usart1 okay okay so at this stage we have defined all the ble settings and as well the platform settings in order to enable the logs so what's next next will be the code generation okay so now let's move to code generation. So pretty simple, with cube ID, there is this little wheel on the top that allows to generate the code. So let's move to my project and let's generate the code. Okay, so now the code is under generation. So at some point at the end, we should have the code now generated, so the next will be application code. But before moving to application code itself, let's have a look about the code generated. 
okay so here the code now has been generated so you should see some files here in the project explorer and if you go to wpan app appbre.c and if you scroll down a bit you will see that indeed the advertising payload is the one that i have set using the kubemx tool okay so now that means we can move to application code application code indeed using kubemx for the time being we have set the advertising payload the advertising interval the configuration itself but now the application need to ask to the chipset to the stack to move to discoverable so to advertising using the payload that we have defined so we have to build and to add some code some application code to do this please refer to the cheat sheet which is part of the link of the youtube video in order to copy past the right code so let me open the first one we'll have to copy is so in the section ends on one code need to move the device in advertising let's copy this code this code need to be copy passed in the code at user code begin app blin2 okay so let's move to the code scrolling a bit down here we are user code begin app 267 i copy the code now let's imagine that your device is visible fine great you connect and you disconnect if you are disconnected and if you want to move back in advertising you have as well to add some code which basically is the same application need to ask to the stack to move back to advertising and this need to be done under the section user code begin even disconnection complete this is the event raised by the stack to the application saying we have been disconnected so again let's move back to the cheat sheet we copy the code which by the way is exactly the same so i move back okay and looking at this connection event here we are i'm disconnected and under the user code begin section i pass the code okay we are done so now we have built the application code what's next the next is to build and to build you have to click on the hammer here so let's start to build the code okay i click on the hammer the code now is on the build okay and next what we'll have to do is to flash the board but prior to flash the board of course we have to connect the board to our laptop so let me connect the board so this is my nuclear board that i need to connect over usb to my laptop okay board is connected i'm ready to play or at least to flash so my smartphone is not is around okay okay so the build now is not yet completely over take a bit of time today let's wait for the completion okay build is done okay so now next is to flash the board and to flash the board i just need to click here on the green arrow okay which is the application you are willing to flash yes this is a wba55 what is it the bigger you are using it's st link yes apply and go so at this stage the st link will take control of my board okay i will flash so debugger is now controlling and flashing so download in progress okay great now the download is done so my board here has been flashed okay now let me open my smartphone so i will open the 
needed application. So let me display my smartphone here. Okay. Okay. I'm opening the ST Toolbox application. Then my smartphone is able to discover my device. So as you can see, my smartphone is able to detect DOM STM32. I can even connect to my board. Okay, now I'm connected. I'm connected. Okay, but what I can do? Nothing. We have not created the attribute table. This will be part of the second end zone. So in this chapter, we have been able to connect. And in later section, we'll be able to exchange data after creating a database. So first, I hope that you all succeed to make your device discoverable and then to connect to it. Okay, so you hopefully all succeed to connect your smartphone to your board, to your nuclear board. Let's have a, a bit of look about debug capability with an extra bonus, okay? Let's add some logs to our uh, application. How to do this? It's pretty simple. You just need to open back your CubeMX tool. Okay, so let's do it together. You just need to click back on the IOC file. So I'm opening back the IOC file. Okay, so it's processing again uh, in order to be able to display the tool. And as soon as the tool will be ready, we will just have to enable the logs. Okay, so the rendering is on the way. So, okay, CubeMX is there. I just need again to go to the WB pan panel. Okay, let me extend this. And inside configuration, this is where I would be able basically to enable the trace. Application logs support disable. I just need to enable it. Okay, fine. But what I need to do now, I need to generate back the code. So either you go to Control S in order to save, or you click the line below just to make sure the first line enable has been taken into account. Okay. And you generate it back by the wheel. So on my side, okay, enable. Let me Control S. Okay. It asked me if I want to regenerate the code back. Yes, I want to generate it back. Okay, so new code on the generation. Good. And then what I will have to do? Of course, before seeing and being able to see any logs, what we'll have to do as soon as the new code has been generated, okay, which is now the case, I will have, of course, to build back because you have just changed some settings. So I need again to build back. So I click again on the hammer in order to build back my application. Okay, so it's building back. As here I've changed a .h file is building back the full application. So again, we we'll take a bit of time. Okay, and as soon as the build will be done, I would be able to flash. Build is done, so now let's flash the board. Again, the arrow array here. So let me flash my board. So again, I'm flashing to my nuclear board. Okay. So now what I need to do, basically the idea is to build and to see some logs. So that's why we have installed the TerraTerm. So I still have my board, which is of course still connected to my PC. Then I can open for TerraTerm. Okay, let me open the basic TerraTerm. Okay, so I open the TerraTerm window. The settings needed for sure. First, I have to open the right COM port. So the COM port is, for me, will be the uh, 123, I guess so. Okay, I'm connected. Okay, so now what I will do in order to see the logs, I will basically press the reset button, my board. So here, if you see the boards, okay, if I press 
the reset button which is just here as you can see I have some logs here let me press it again again I have some logs telling me that the stack has been initialized and so on and so on and again if I open my smartphone with the STL toolbox okay let me open okay so if I mirroring my smartphone here so here let me display on the right place so here maybe my smartphone is capable to see the board and I can try to connect so I will connect I'm connected and as you can see I receive some logs telling me we have been connected the connection interval is 30 milliseconds and so on so here I've got some logs input about the connection settings so here just by setting a flag through the cube ID we have been able easily to add some logs in order to ease code understanding and debug capabilities okay so hopefully you all succeed to connect your smartphone to our Nucleo WBA55 board so here uh, thanks to the powerful uh, STM32 cube ecosystem we succeed within a few clicks and line of code to build a basic device discoverable okay uh, so now what is next step next step will be with Sebastian to build an attribute table service characteristic to be then able to exchange some data from your smartphone to the WBA55